the last remnants of the 2023 college football season are nigh upon us as bowl game season lurks right around the corner. Over the course of this video and the video coming out on Friday, I am going to go through almost every single bowl game and predict a winner and a loser. I will be saving five individual games to break down in their own dedicated video. But outside of those five games, we're going to be predicting every single bowl game. So with the intro out of the way, I'd like to say hello and welcome to the JSA studio. I am your host as always, Nathan, and we're going to start off today with the Myrtle Beach Bowl between Georgia Southern and Ohio. Vegas believes that Georgia Southern is the better team by three and a half points, and I don't agree with them. I think they match up pretty bad against Ohio. Now, neither of these teams particularly have a whole lot of people opting out or transferring. There's uh, only one player for Georgia Southern, a long snapper, and Miles Cross, a wide receiver for Ohio, is the only opt-out for Ohio at this point of time, which is the last caveat we're going to have here, which is I am recording this at 5 o'clock on the 12th of December. So if players opt out after that point in time, I'm sorry, I can't see into the future. But right now, these are the only two opt-outs involving players from teams in this bowl game. So when it comes to this matchup, I still think that even though Miles Cross is transferring and he was their second leading receiver, he was only one yard behind their leading receiver. And while that is a big loss, I don't particularly think it's that big of a loss. Like, I think Miles Cross is a good player. I think he's probably likely to transfer up a little bit. But Georgia Southern is better at defending the pass than they are the run. So I don't really think that the passing game is going to be how Ohio is going to win this game. I do think it's close because I only have Ohio winning by three points. So Georgia Southern could very easily win this game. However, the reason that I am picking Ohio is because Ohio's run defense and pass defense are significantly better than Georgia Southern's rush offense and pass offense. Now, they are a more pass-heavy team. Uh, they have thrown for almost 3,700 yards and rushed for about 1,500 However, I think they're going to have a hard time running the ball, and I think Ohio's defense is going to be able to make them passing the ball a little bit more difficult than a lot of teams that they've played this year. Georgia Southern will still get their licks in, but I think ultimately Ohio does have the advantage in this game, which is why I have them winning by a score of 24 to 21. Up next, we have the New Orleans Bowl, and in this bowl game, neither side has any opt-outs or transfers at this moment in time. And this is, to me, a little bit more of a simpler matchup than the previous one, because I think there's a very clear narrative that is going to surround this game. Jacksonville State is much more of a running team than a passing team, and Louisiana's defense, specifically their rush defense, is very good. And Jacksonville State's defense has shown cracks in the pass game, and Louisiana's passing offense is pretty good as well. So I think Louisiana is going to be able to win this game. Because of the way that the two teams match up, the way that the schemes play against each other, and just the general level of talent, I do think Louisiana is just a tad bit higher than Jacksonville State. And as far as Jacksonville State's offense against Louisiana's defense would go, we'll to talk about that a little bit more in depth here. I think that if Zion Webb or someone else, as I believe they do rotate quarterbacks down there in Jacksonville. So if Webb or one of the other quarterbacks can hit a couple of big pass plays, which they have shown the ability to do from time to time, then I think they will have a better chance. And I do think they'll get one or two, maybe three of those sort of plays to keep Louisiana's defense guessing a little bit. But this is ultimately a Jacksonville State offense that burns a lot of clock and a Louisiana offense that doesn't need a whole lot of clock to score. 
Now, Louisiana has also burned through two quarterbacks this year. However, there honestly hasn't been all that much of a dip-off in terms of quality of quarterback play from the first stringer to the second stringer to ultimately the third stringer, Chandler Fields. So I think they'll still probably be able to get about the same average production that you would expect based off of their season totals. And because of that, I am going to pick Louisiana to win by the score of 23-20. to 20. Up next is the Cure Bowl between Miami of Ohio and the Appalachian State Mountaineers, or App State as people call them. This is a pretty interesting matchup here because on paper, this should probably be a little bit of a closer game than I'm predicting. However, I think the story of this game is going to be the fact that Miami is going to be able to run the football on this App State defense fairly effectively, and they're kind of just going to dominate the game and milk it away a little bit. App State has shown a little bit of inconsistency in the passing game, which has been their bread and butter on offense so far this year, and I expect that to likely continue. Uh, as both of these teams don't really have anybody transferring out. Miami currently has no transfers or opt-outs, and Appalachia State has one guy who played linebacker, and I'm not even sure he actually played for them this year, who is transferring out. So I, we've got two teams here at full strength, and assuming we get what we have gotten out of them, I think Miami wins fairly easily. I just think they're going to be able to run the ball pretty consistently against this App State defense that has not shown the ability to stop the run at a particularly high level. Even for the group of five, they're, they're not one of the better run defenses in the group of five. And I do think that App State will be able to get their punches in on the offensive side of the ball, but I don't think that's ultimately going to matter. And I have Miami of Ohio winning by the score of 27 to 20. Up next is the New Mexico Bowl featuring New Mexico State and Fresno State. Now, both of these teams have had some transfers. However, there's really only been two that I would define as impact, quote unquote. And that's uh, both for Fresno State, their backup quarterback and a rotational DB to the transfer portal. So perhaps they're a little thin or a little bit inexperienced at relatively key positions. Now, obviously, you hope the quarterback doesn't get hurt, so the backup quarterback doesn't matter. However, losing that DB that did play quite a bit and actually played fairly well is perhaps important against a team that passes the ball as effectively as New Mexico State does. Now, New Mexico State I think played in the worst conference than Fresno State. That is to say that I believe the Mountain West this year was better than Conference USA. So perhaps Fresno State's 8-4 and four is a little bit more impressive than New Mexico State's 10 wins. So interestingly enough, we do actually have a direct comparison between these two teams. They both played New Mexico University. So that was interesting to look at. Fresno State actually lost that game, and New Mexico State actually won that game fairly handedly. They won by 10 points. However, Fresno State does have the much better and much more impressive wins on their schedule. They beat Purdue and Arizona State. They absolutely destroyed Arizona State. They won that game 29 to nothing. Then they went on to handle Kent State. They beat a very good UNLV team and a Boise State team that hadn't quite figured it out yet. And New Mexico State does have the shocking win over an Auburn team that got caught looking ahead to Alabama, as well as a solid W over Jacksonville State. And they played well against Liberty the second time they played. So New Mexico State does have some notches under the belt, but overall, I think Fresno State has played a tougher schedule. Now, when it comes to directly comparing these two teams, I think the matchup favors New Mexico State pretty greatly. I think New Mexico State is better on defense than people might realize. Like, they're not a good defense by any stretch of the imagination. They're probably average for Power 5 standards, 
and Fresno State's defense I actually think is kind of bad. So I think New Mexico State is going to pretty much be able to do whatever they want to on the offensive side of the ball. And I think Fresno might have a little bit of a more difficult time generating offense in this game. So I'm going to predict New Mexico State to beat Fresno State by the score of 31 to 21. Up next, we have the LA Bowl between UCLA and Boise State. And this is the first bowl game where the opt-outs and the transfer portal really, really affect what happens here. So I think UCLA is basically going to dominate this game. And that's largely because Boise State's best wide receiver, Eric McAllister, and their starting quarterback, Taylor Green, have both entered the transfer portal and will not play in this game. So... Even though UCLA has had a bunch of players jump in the transfer portal as well, I, I just don't see any real scenario where Boise State wins this game without their best two players on offense. Because even though Boise can run the ball fairly effectively, uh, UCLA's defense, just athletically, the Power Five, they're just at a different level than Boise State right now. UCLA did lose their defensive coordinator as well. I don't think it'll matter as much this year. So I do think that UCLA is going to win this game pretty easily. I have the score being UCLA 28, Boise State 13. Up next is the Independence Bowl between Texas Tech and Cal. Both of these teams have gotten got a little bit by the transfer portal here. Texas Tech, though, I think has gotten got a bit more. Now, they did lose their backup quarterback to the transfer portal, as did Cal. However, I don't think either of those things particularly matter in this game and how this game is going to play out, in my opinion. Cal can't really throw the ball. They have not shown the ability to move the ball through the air consistently throughout the season. Texas Tech has also struggled pretty badly throwing the ball too. So these are two run-oriented teams. So we really got to look at the offensive lines and we really got to look at the running backs to kind of figure out who's going to win this game. And as much as I like Taj Brooks for Texas Tech, I don't think he's as good as Jade Knott. I do think it's going to be fairly close. These are two very similar teams. They need to run the ball in order to be successful. However, Cal has just shown the ability to put more points on the board than Texas Tech this year. So I am going to take Cal by the score of 24 to 21. Next bowl game is the Bahamas Bowl between Old Dominion and Western Kentucky. This game is pretty simple. Even though Western Kentucky has gotten ravaged by the transfer portal as long as reed and corley are playing they're gonna win this game because the offensive line the way that they've been playing the past few years that have become somewhat interchangeable and and yes losing your leading tackler who's a defensive back uh tyleek allen is a big deal I don't think Old Dominion has the level of athlete to be able to take advantage of such a thing. I just think Western Kentucky is on a different level than Old Dominion this year. And because of that, I am predicting Western Kentucky to win by the score of 28 to 20. Now we have the Frisco Bowl between Marshall and the University of Texas San Antonio, or as I will be referring to them as UTSA. And as the score on your screen right now might indicate, I don't particularly think this is going to be very much of a game. I think Texas San Antonio is a lot better than their record says. I think they lost to some teams that are genuinely very, very good. Or in the case of Army, a tough sort of game to match up against, but their other losses are to Houston, which was the first game of the year. They hadn't really kind of figured it out yet. That, that one's a tough look, I'm not going to lie to you. But then it's to uh, Tennessee and Tulane, and those were their two toughest games on their schedule this year. However, those are two teams that are very, very good. So I'm not really going to knock them for that. And when you look at the way that they've won their other games against solid teams in South Florida and Rice and Temple, then they're a pretty quality team. 
Also, the American Conference is significantly better than Conference USA for Marshall. And I just don't really see a scenario where Marshall is going to be able to stop UTSA. Now, they might stop themselves, which is something that they have been known to do from time to time. However, I don't think Marshall, even though they actually have a pretty decent passing defense, is going to be able to slow down Cephas at all. The great wide receiver for uh, the Roadrunners in San Antonio. So I think this is going to be a fairly unentertaining game unless you just like looking at offensive highlights. Uh, so I have UTSA winning by the score of 38 to 21. Next bowl game up on the docket is the Boca Raton Bowl between USF and Syracuse. I think the story of this game is going to be USF's run defense and Syracuse's ability to run the football, which they do have the ability to run the football at a fairly high level. So I think they're likely going to be able to grind out some long-ish sort of yards, you know, some seven to ten play sort of touchdown drives. So I think that is likely going to be what happens. If USF is going to score, it's likely to be on the big play in the passing game. So between those two things, I am going to take the consistency of Syracuse's offense and the fact that they do play a little bit better defense than USF as well and generally speaking have a higher quality of athlete as my main reasons as to why Syracuse is going to win this game by the score of 31 to 24. Next game up here is the Gasparilla Bowl between Georgia Tech and UCF. And this game is an underrated matchup. This game, I think, is going to be wildly entertaining because these are two teams that play high-quality offense and absolutely no defense. And on top of not having a great defense per se, Georgia Tech lost their best pass rusher in Kyle Kennard, in my opinion, and a contributing defensive back in Keenan Johnson. So losing two actual contributors on the defensive side of the ball is somewhat concerning, especially when going up against an offense like UCF that can flat out put points on the board. UCF has lost some players in the transfer portal as well, but none of them are really impact or even contributing level players. So they've pretty much got their whole team at 100% here. Now, UCF has actually played high quality games against good opponents this year. So I think UCF is A, the better football team than Georgia Tech, but B, I think they are more likely to have the ability to put up points in this game because of the balance of their offense than Georgia Tech is. Georgia Tech kind of struggles to throw the ball at times. They've been able to run the ball on pretty much everybody the whole year, but Haynes King has struggled at times with turnovers and interceptions and just flat out and straight up missing passes sometimes. So I think because of the consistency and the consistent level of explosiveness coming from the UCF offense, I'm going to give this one in a shootout to UCF by the score of 45 to 38. The next game here is the Birmingham Bowl between Duke and Troy. And this is a game that would have been a lot more interesting had Riley Leonard, the quarterback for Duke, not transferred to Notre Dame before the bowl game. And now that he has transferred to Notre Dame, which he actually announced today uh, when I'm recording this, so had he decided to actually play in the bowl game, I think this could have been a little bit more interesting, especially the fact that he hasn't been 100% for most of this year. But he isn't playing in this game, and because of that, I just don't particularly see a way that Duke is going to be able to move the ball consistently. And Troy has had some significant success on the offensive side of the football here. Normally, when you think Troy and the program that they were a few years ago, you think defense, but uh, they've actually been an offensive football team this year. And their only two losses are to a fantastic James Madison team and a Kansas State team that is currently ranked inside the top 20. So this is a very, very good Troy team. And even though I do think Duke's defense is going to be good enough to 
hold them below their normal offensive output, I think they're still fairly easily going to score in the mid to high 20s. And I don't particularly see a scenario where Duke gets anywhere near that number. So I am predicting Troy to win this game 24 to 13. So this next game is interesting because of the clash of styles between these two teams. Northern Illinois is a run-heavy team, and Arkansas State is actually a passing offense. They are significantly better at passing the football than they are at running the football, and they are significantly better at passing the football than Northern Illinois is and vice versa. Northern Illinois is significantly better at running the ball than they are passing and significantly better at running the ball than Arkansas State is. So hypothetically, you could see a scenario where Arkansas State is getting these quick strike sort of drives and Northern Illinois is going on these long sort of grinded out touchdown drives where they're getting four or five, six yards a carry and the defense is getting more and more worn down. That's the kind of game that I think this is ultimately going to turn into. And because of that, I am going to pick Northern Illinois in this game by the score of 28 to 21. The next game irks me a little bit. The Armed Forces Bowl, Air Force versus James Madison University. And this doesn't irk me because Air Force is in the armed forces and that creates some sort of advantage for them. I don't particularly think it does. But they could have done so many interesting things with both of these teams, and they didn't. Like, it would have been awesome to see Air Force play like Troy or Coastal Carolina or whoever, not James Madison. And it would have been awesome to see James Madison pitted up against a Power 5, you know, mid-level sort of team. But instead, we're left with this underwhelming matchup for both of these teams and uh, it's just a bad matchup for Air Force. Uh, James Madison has unironically a very good defense that stops the run at a high level so I think this is going to be a tough game for Air Force to be able to move the ball and I think uh, even though Air Force's defense is very very good I don't think they're particularly going to be able to slow down James Madison enough for them to be able to grind out a victory in this game. I think James Madison is going to win by the score 23-3. to Next one up is the Idaho Potato Bowl between Utah State and Georgia State. And this one I may need an asterisk by. If Cooper Lagos or McCade Hillstead for Utah State end up going, both of which have seen significant time this year and have operated the offense at a fairly high level. If one of those two top two quarterbacks can go, then I think Utah State probably wins a high scoring sort of game. If Levi Wallace has to end up being the quarterback to go, he only really has one start under his belt. And even though he looked pretty good in that start, we just don't know about him. You know what I mean? He's a third string quarterback. If that happens, then I would feel more confident taking Georgia State. I don't think either Lagos's or Hillstead's injuries are all that serious. I can't find anything saying that they hurt themselves seriously or anything like that. Legas, I believe, re-injured his ankle that he had in injured previously early on in the year. So if he can go, I think Utah wins fairly easily. He actually played at a very high level when he was playing this year. And uh, for Georgia State, the formula to victory is going to be pound the rock. They're very good at running the football. And Utah State's run defense has been fairly suspect this year. However, if Utah State can get one of their two quarterbacks going, or maybe even if Levi Williams ends up looking really, really good like he did in his one start in the last game of the season versus New Mexico, then I think that Utah State will have a very good chance to win this game. And I am going to assume that they get to go in this game, and I do have Utah State winning 31-28. to 28. 
Up next is the 68 Ventures Bowl, South Alabama versus Eastern Michigan. Now, normally, as someone living in the state of Michigan, I would be all about Eastern Michigan and telling you how they're, they've actually been kind of good the past few years and they've made some bowl games and all of that, and I'd be all about them either winning or being competitive, but uh, they got no chance in this game. South Alabama is a significantly better team than Eastern Michigan. And I believe that the uh, Eagles here are in for some uh, rough times in the next game that they're going to play here. I have South Alabama winning by the score of 38 to 13. Up next, we have the first matchup of the season between two teams that I would actually quantify as pretty good at the Power 5 level, Northwestern and Utah. If you like defensive football where you're not sure if it's because the defense is good or because the offense is bad, then you're going to love this game. Basically, if you love the Big Ten West, then you'll love this game. And this is going to be a tough game to watch or win for both of these teams because the fact of the matter is that both these teams do play defense at a high level and that both of these teams do have relatively suspect offenses. Now, I do think Utah's has shown some legitimate life against some pretty decent teams this year, so I do believe they are ultimately going to win the game. They also do have more talent than Northwestern. Northwestern has some good players and some guys that may or may not be NFL type of people, but Utah has a whole bunch of those types of guys. So I, I do think Utah is the more talented team, and even though I do think the offense might take a step back with a few of their transfers and people going to the draft, especially the two quarterbacks, Barnes and Johnson, who have both entered the transfer portal. However, I still think that they probably find a way either through the running game or special teams or scoring on defense, kind of just figure a way to weasel their way into a win here. So I have Utah winning by the score of 14 to 10. The final bowl game we're going to break down in today's video. We will do the rest of the games that I am planning on not making individual videos on in the next video coming out on Friday. However, the final game we're going to do today is the Hawaii Bowl between Coastal Carolina and San Jose State. And when this bowl was first announced, I was fairly excited. However, Coastal Carolina got absolutely ravaged by the transfer portal, specifically quarterback Grayson McCall, who is one of the better quarterbacks available in the transfer portal. And San Jose State has not had nearly the same level of production and talent enter the transfer portal for them. So I don't particularly think that this is going to be all that interesting of a game. I think you might get some offensive fireworks here. I still think Coastal Carolina has a good program and is on the upcoming in terms of group of five teams, specifically within the Sun Belt. However, uh, San Jose State is way better, and they actually played decent against some really, really good Power 5 teams and USC this year. So I do believe San Jose State is ultimately going to be the team that comes away with the W here. I just think they've got too much on offense. I think they also have more probably overall talent than Coastal Carolina and also just have a more favorable matchup against Coastal Carolina that Coastal Carolina has against them. So I'm going to predict San Jose State to win by the score of 28 to 17. But that's just me. What do I know? I'm just some asshole on the internet giving you his opinion. So it's at this point where I'd like to ask you to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and if you disagreed with me at any point, or you just have something to say, go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section below. So with the outro out of the way, there's only one thing left to say, and that's that I'll see you next time.